And I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but they are glossy, which makes these really, really, really beautiful. So there's rose colors, and then you can see some of the greens and blues here. And then a little bit more of those. We'll just have a blue for this color. Yes. It's so rich. Yes. Yeah. So the packaging is actually the first thing that intrigued me. Yeah. I was like, oh, I just like having their packaging. Yeah. It looks really cool, but they come in these individual tubs. So you can just take the color so you can the color that you want to be working with. Um, or you can just work from like from here, but you can take out you just take them out, and then when you're done using them, they're all labeled right here, so you know, okay, this is number 47, we're going to put it back in the right spot. Oh, nice. I would totally know. So we put it all back in the right spot. You've got every time. And then there's um, this little protective cover that goes over them as well. So you want to wait until they're dry until you cover them back up. They're calm. And on the inside of the cover, you can actually do swatches right there. So I started doing that this morning to show you. But you can fill in all the swatches so you've got all of your colors up here. So they're super easy to work with. And... Like I said, great for beginners, but they're also great for anyone who isn't a beginner. I know Chrissy on our creative team, she uses these almost daily. Yeah. So, and she's, I, I would call her more advanced than me. And so, yeah, she may have more experience yeah. than you. You're just getting into it, but one day you'll be like, right exactly. So, great for sketching, great for um, painting, great for fresh lettering, really anything. Colors are awesome. I'm wondering if anyone in the chat has used these because I'd love to hear your experience. There's nothing but good things, and I'm excited to work with you more. Well, I know people are starting to incorporate these even into their coloring books. Yes. Yes. Yeah, coloring books are now allowing to use the large of the which is to get to it. Green one has some watercolor coloring books coming out that we saw at CJ. I can't wait to get that out. And they also have little palettes of watercolors as well, but um, I can't wait to get that. So we'll check in with Emily, and I'm going to show this really cool camera and video that we have. So what are people thinking of these? Sounds like we have some people who have them, haven't broken them out to play them yet, and people are really interested. They love like, the richness of the colors and how clean they are as paint. Um, I know we, I also picked up the 12 pound glasses for the high period of that started with some watercolors. I really want to learn how to do the first one right now, so... That might be a company thing to work with because I think the office works too good. Yeah, you guys can follow them. That's okay. Um, you could say, ask, what can you do with them? Because they're not like, like, I wouldn't consider myself like a painter, but I still have to be kind of interested in picking them up for like the fresh lettering. Like, what kind of other things, if you don't really think of yourself as like a painter or an artist, do you think you could use these paints for? Um, you can use them for backgrounds on cards or any um, layouts that you're doing. Just, you know, put the colors out in any way that you want. Mix them up and match them however you want. But you can just make really beautiful backgrounds with them. Um, you can just, like, I have just a little sketchbook that, I don't know, any, I'm not a painter or something like that, but you can just, like, when you're feeling creative, you know, play around with them and fill out some pages of your book. So you don't have to have a textual purpose of like, I'm painting pictures. Yeah, I don't see what else. You could do just looking at the swatches through that I've created. You can even do, you know, take kind of, you know, an ombre shot, like maybe use the color and get a canvas and just kind of do an ombre and then, or even use a paper book to do a thicker part and frame it using it on the court and then you're just going from dark to light, dark to light. You just make really cool kind of pattern, splatter, whatever, and create your own artwork on the court. Exactly. And then you can also use them on other surfaces as well. So Megan actually did this, where she was using the really that. Yeah, I love that so you can see on the overhead as well. So she just drew some watercolor painting here on directly onto the wood. So you never thought to do any more. Right. The possibility to do it. Yes. So you can, you know, what is this? We have a couple of others. That I can show since the question was asked. So this oh, is yeah. just like a background with some stamping on it. So oh, you don't need to do a ton. Yeah. yeah. And then she, I don't know that they're going to be so good. But you can put these all together. She did some stamping and watercoloring. And once again, you could frame that. You know what I mean? And put that 
and the dust and the mantle and the shelf. But yeah, that's so cool. So just having a little bit of water to anything. So it was, but this thing, and you really can't you really can't go wrong. That's the great thing about water to is that no matter what you do, it just looks pretty, right? Yeah, it's kind of not bad. So if you want to see something really pretty when we're talking about the brush lighting, um, this was actually in the Happy Crafting video that you guys saw if you were part of that video and looked at the YouTube video. But this was done at the same booth with just hatch. So it was just these watercolors mm -hmm. with a water brush. And she did that beautiful way with Happy Crafting. She made it look seriously so beautiful. Oh yeah, sure. Just let me like, you know, whip this up a little bit, and it was actually really relaxing watching her do it. It, it was. was. It was so, it was so easy. It flowed so nicely. And, uh, yeah, this is gorgeous. I mean, if I could do this, I probably would want to do this. I'll show you my attempt. Oh, you can. I'll show you my attempt. So there's no way. I'm going to judge it. Hey, you were excited. You got to show me. I did not. I didn't look anything. Oh, I just started doing it. You know, I was looking. I look, well, I looked on the internet for a couple of years yeah. to see how the layers were. It was nice. Hey, you're on yeah. the show. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. First attempt with any. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You had like the bar. Yeah. yeah. And then I did. Yeah. 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 Ye
I'm going to be this one. I'm going to give you a little bit of a deep because it reminds me of a moment of consistency of like a Wendy's Frosty. I don't know how it sounds like it's kind of like gritty or like, yeah. That's what this reminds me of. I lived on Wendy's Frosty when I was having a So I guess it's still like a good thing. It's a good thing. And you have a marshmallow, it's a little bit of, you know, but anyway, it's gritty. All you're going to do is just take it and just rub it over your entire surface. And what's great about this line is that since it is the stress, you can use it with all of your research products. So your ink, um, you know, your uh, sprays, anything of the research line you can use with this. So you're going to cover your entire surface. And you're going to let this dry. And I know we all love to be getting a heat tools for this, but you're just going to want to let this dry. And it's on a clean cake. You know, up to 15, 20 minutes, depending on where you're located and where you're going back and maybe. But you want to make sure it's totally dry before you go into the next session. I'm going to have a prepared, um, when it's already dry, you can see here, you can see here it's already dry, and it kind of sounds like it's going to be coming in. So the next step is, you're going to, you know, while you're, um, you're going to dry, 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 dry. You're going to put whatever paper you want. I don't know if this one you guys can tell, but it's kind of like an ombre blue kind of wave. It's kind of like the avoid it, so it's kind of like an ocean type deal. Mm -hmm. And I just put a bunch of pieces of paper, just these like little like sea glasses, like mosaic pieces. And you can cut it however you want. There's no rhyme or reason how I did this. I just kind of cut whatever. Um, if there is a pattern you like, you can use punches and kind of touch your nail or miles if you want it, but I just can't help you. So next, you're going to take the glue. Okay, right? I forgot my paintbrush. So you're going to take your glue, and you're going to put your glue, and you're going to put it directly on your surface. And then you're going to take the glue, and you're going to put it on the back. I want us to grab it for you. So you can do it in the back. And I want to grab my hand. So you want to make sure you do it's glue to glue. So you're going to glue the glue on your surface, and then glue on your paper, and you're going to put it on your ear to your surface. Well, I'm not going to try with my brush. I really like the whole project. Exactly, exactly. Uh, let's see. So, a couple things. The grout is thick on the inside. Um, the nice texture to it is heavy body. I'm going to go on the side of variety of surfaces. The glue is also heavy body. It's an exclusive. Um, and you can, you know, here's the numerous surfaces, and it kind of dries it up to the next. So, it's not going to be glossy or it's not going to be glossy. It's going to be matte. It's going to be matte. Um, and it's going to be blown so that's a really cool thing you can do when it's Oh, that's cool that you can do it. Yeah. So, yeah. so we're going to attempt that here. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. I forgot that you could do that. So, you know what? Let's just try it. Let's try it. Let's try it. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So, grab a little ink, a little, a little glue there. And then you're just going to put it directly on your surface. Grab one of your little piles. Because it's a paper here. And you're going to glue that glue. Okay. You can see that from the back. And then you can put it in the back. And then place it down. And you're going to continue doing this. Just adding all of your pieces. And then glue. Glue. And then are you putting a layer over it as well? Yeah. So once you fill the whole thing up, once you fill the whole thing up with all of the paper, tiles, whatever you're working with, um, you're then going to go over the whole thing with a layer of glue. So you're going to just go all over the top, put it on the next row, covering the entire thing. That's just going to kind of seal it down um, and make sure it's nice and adhered to your surface. You can see that. And I've one that's already dry here. So you can see that matte finish there. Mm -hmm. And it's all sealed down. So once it's all sealed, you're then going to take your distress to the mosaic glaze. And this is what's going to transform those papers into what's going to look like a tile, or it's going to give it to that 3D rays that I'm doing. And the other thing I want to show right now the um, Ranger Glossy Essence. These were very similar. Um, so if you're running out of the glaze because you've gotten, you know, so obsessed with adding dimensions, you can also use this because it adds a three dimension as well. Great for adding dimension to your paper project. This one is a little bit thicker. Um, you can also hold the shape a little better, but you don't want to use it. So, so when you're done, you don't want to shake this. Because if you do, you're going to create bubbles, and then you're going to have the bubbles and So you open the shake, and we're just going to put the tip down here. I hope you guys can see this. I'm just going over my paper with 
that glaze. And it's so thick that it's not going to run off wherever you put it. It's not going to bleed over or bleed off the edge. So you just kind of fill it in. You see how there's kind of that bubble that kind of dimension over it? You're going to go over every single one of your tiles. And this can take a little bit. I don't know where you're putting your project is, but I think it's kind of black. And you can put it in the eye, but it's kind of coloring it in. Yeah, that is. It's just a glaze. You just kind of go over each piece of paper, adding that dimension. And once again, you want to make sure um, when you're finished with all of these that you allow a proper time to do that. Because you don't want to get excited, which many of us do, and kind of jump around and start working with it. You want to make it before it's So hopefully you guys can see on the camera there the dimension. Okay, that's pretty good. So put that to the side. And then once it's dry, this is already cut down. But once it's dry, you can see when it's cut down. And that's where it yeah, kind of feels like this is dry. So once it's dry, you can then work with it. So I have not done this yet, so we're just going to go with it. But you're supposed to be able to use your ink with it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this um, like tumble glass to press ink. Take my little blender tool here. And just blend right over that. I'm like, wait, don't worry. I have a piece of your soul. You've got some to see the story. No, I'm going to go from it. The other part um, from the distress line that we have up on the site right now is the distress, distress, refresh, refresh. Thank you. Let me get it over here. And this is to kind of bring your, your ink pads up. I'm still feeling all dry. I'm going to see your markers, your ink pads, and the lasers. Um, so it's great, so if anything that feels a little bit dry, or you can use it as a new little flow, you can add the distress. That's what it is. Distress, refresh, to it to give it more life and give it more color. It's a lot of stuff. So let me just put it over on this and see if we can put that some color. Okay. 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 Yeah, you can see it adding a little bit of color there. So you can add whatever color you want. Obviously, this works great with all of the discussion. So I like the spray, the spritzes, the ink pads, and the ink. Oh, my God, this is good. And then once you cover all of it, I think you can see that it's so very, very light there. We also have, how we want to play together, the distress sprayer. And this is awesome because it has a little lock in here to unlock. So if you're traveling with it, you can lock it. It's not going to fill up. I was going to do a drawer. You can lock it. It's not going to be. So the thing about this spray bottle is that people are not getting that kind of ladder look. Mm -hmm. And to do that, I guess, if you guys can see here, you just kind of like give it like a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of that's the only thing I have. It's kind of a bit long though. So it's really good for that. And then if you can see, hopefully, there's a really fine mist. This is going to help with all the products. So I'm just going to find these kind of mist things that I think I'm going to kind of see it reacting. And I'm going to take my bottle here. And I'm just going to kind of dab it. I'm going to kind of dab over that. And you can see, well, you know, have that but it kind of gives that kind of vintage, like kind of sea glass effect. If you guys can see that, um, but really, really cool. And then, obviously, I hadn't done the inking before this. All I did was take my paper, I put it out, and I added it to a little box. You can add it to a little box. You can add it to a frame. You can also add it to a really cool if you have um, a paper mache. Spray or even a wooden spray and add it to the inside. And to do that, there's also the distress micro glaze, which is a sealer. So if you're going to use that in something that's going to you know, be used a lot and mm -hmm. you want to protect it, you just put the micro glaze sealer on top of it. Use it for like a jewelry. It's kind of like a waxy thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you guys can see, but it kind of almost looks like, I think it's like, it's really jelly, but it's harder. Yeah, it makes it like a wax kind of thing. So you can put that on top of the surface and begin to protect it. Um, so as you can see, all of these products kind of work hand in hand together, um, especially with these. So where do you stop? I don't know, because they all work together. And they're not done yet. This, 
this one we didn't have a lot of time to play with. So trust me, it's amazing. This is the Distress DIY Custom Blanking Pack. So you can create your own custom blanking pack. So this looks great once again with all the Distress lines. So you can spray your um, re-inkers. And the re-inkers are probably going to be your best one when it comes because you can take all these colors and you can take, you can take six of your colors. Let's say pink, blue, or yellow, or orange. Whatever, same frame, but same thing says. And you could do maybe a little circle there up to it. Maybe a line of color here. Maybe a couple colors here. So it's all kind of different. But then once you get set, you can eat it in your image. will be kind of like a cool, either on there. Whatever design you have on here will be kind of set. So you can totally customize it. I know I think the way they've done they um, ombre or they can have a really hot and go away with that. So these are really cool. They're just white. They are the, um, the same formula, so the water base and the water base and the um, So once again, whatever color you add to that, it's going to be your um, product. So that's really cool. Really cool. And then I just sprayed. It says to let it soak in for a little while before you use it, but I use the Distress Refresher and I hold it in my eye. And it just basically says give it two to three. In, go two to three inches from the pad, the pad will be sprayed, let it sink in, and it's going to refresh that ink in the pad. You can also use it on the markers, um, and then you just need to spray it on the marker and then recap it to hydrate. Yeah. And then you can use it on your ink, spray the dabber for the next season and recap the dabber to keep it hydrated. Oh, so that's a really good idea. idea of just fun. My brother is already about to go on. I don't know, it's been a couple of minutes, so let's see. I feel like this is a light color of orange, so it might be. Ooh. I don't have any more. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going over the, the, this is the, before I did the little kind of dimension of them. True. The ladies on there, but yeah. Awesome. I love it. This is more than I know. Yeah. Very, very cool. So, yeah, so those are all of the awesome to most dress line uh, goodies that we have on sale now. Like I said, really, you can use all of them together and, you know, some of the best things that make you come up. That's right. So, let's see what's going on with Emily in the chat and see who's. I think it's a good one. Well, it sounds like a lot of people are really like picking the distress sprayer in particular. It sounds like it's a really good size for a lot of people, a little bit bigger than some others that might be out there. So it'll hold a lot of water, um, great size for projects. Someone asked, the distress refresh, it doesn't cost, like you can use it with any color, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter, it's like whatever, as long as it's the distress product. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other questions? Sounds like some people are mindless and how those ink pads that you have in trouble between color choices. That's always the hardest part because you do have to commit. Right? Yeah. 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 It's not going to come off and then you can you yeah. just commit to whatever it is. Yeah. It comes in. Yeah. That is the ink pad. I know once you kind of commit to a color, you can then kind of customize just the top of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like the color, you know, you can even have multiple of these. Yeah, like which one is that you can actually kind of take your um, your mini um, distress ink pad and kind of do the design on the front so you know exactly what you're working with or what you're doing. It's pretty cool too. Yeah. All right, awesome. So we're going to move on to Heidi Swap Mixed Media. We have some of her metallic texture paste that you can use for all sorts of mixed media and then fill it with stencil just really simply because. We fell in love with metallics at CHA as well. We named it one of our hot friends. Obviously, metallic has been around for a long time, but we're seeing more and more products that are incorporating metallic. I think it's kind of an extension of the foil and what everybody's loving right now. So, this is um, a brand new product, but a very relevant product to the company's right now. So, I didn't even see it. I mean, I thought, well, I hadn't seen metallic. I mean, I was walking back to our studio and I saw it on the pretty bright. You know, like, Oh, oh, look at this. Yeah, so this is the Heidi Swap Metallic Texture Case. And I'm going to actually show you guys how it can be used. We have it in a variety of different colors. This one is 
um, just like a teal color. Yeah, it's actually called teal. So, um, really pretty blue green color with metallic in it. And I was playing around with this last night. So, in my, and I left this actually on. This is my Dilating Freedom channel that I just started. And I left this on to show you guys what the brand is. I don't know. You're like doing like a project and stuff. So, well, we're always testing things out. So, I'm like, let me just put it in one spot. So, I don't know. And I don't know if you guys are going to do something like that. You can pull it and sell it. Yes. So, we have this in our everyday section. If you search for Dilating Freedom Journal, this is the small size. There's also a larger size. I think it's about eight, which I like because. It fits right into my purse and my bag, and I can just bring it for, you know, whatever. I'm always back and forth between home and work. So, a larger one would be great, too, but I just, I don't want to carry that one here. Okay. So, I was playing with this texture paste last night, and I grabbed some of the Heidi Slot stencils. This is, this one's actually a paper stencil. And I do. That piece is amazing. We have look and feel. Isn't it really, really cool? cool. Yeah. So we have a bunch of Heidi Slot stencils as part of the sale today. One of which are these paper stencils, and it comes they're from six designs to a pack, two of each. So mm -hmm. I knew that working with paper and the texture paste might not be the best idea because I was going to use the stencil. Yeah. But you get to pick, so I was willing to try. So if you, yeah, you have to hold it. Exactly. So all I did was lay my stencil down like that, and then I didn't have my palette knives at home because I was at home doing this. So I took a credit card and I just went over this and then pulled my stencil and then that was gorgeous. Clean. Hopefully you guys can see that as well, like how metallic and and this comes in multiple colors. So there's a pink one, there's a silver one, there's this teal one, and lots of different ones to choose from. But then, there's more. And so then, knowing I wouldn't be able to read the stencil like this, I was okay because I had a second one. But then you got these pretty little pieces. That I didn't even use for anything else. So now these are. You know, mm -hmm. the yeah. and yeah. I just kind of broke it up so I had multiple like them. Mm -hmm. I would never have a product that So, how can you know? I just love the flowers yeah. yeah. and the metallic and the metal. Yeah. So, let's do this real quick. Um, okay, I got, I got a couple of other stencils. This is just a background stencil that we have. I'm going to open up my book here. And then I'm just going to take some of this texture paste and put it on my. You can do background, you can just do mixed media and play around with it, you can just get artsy with it. And yeah, I'm not a huge like mixed media person. It was just fun to play with. Well, yeah, so it's a really cool one. I'm just going to put my stencil down and I'm going to put it and just go over. I see the tape. I see the tape. Yeah. 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 Flipped it over here and just like press it down, just press it down and just so that. This is not wasted. Yeah. It's super glossy, it's metallic, it's pretty, and it's fun to yeah. to play with. So that's the I saw cooking. So what do you guys think? Well, the metallic, how pretty it is. Somebody did ask um, how the paper stencil held up, and because the paper stencil is not, it's probably like a one time use. It's not going to work out as a stencil for very long. But um, this girl would suggest seal the paper stencil before you use it. Oh, genius. Oh, that is really, really smart. That's why I think a fantastic idea. Yes. Fantastic idea. Very, very good. Mind blowing. 
I did not hold up, as you can see. I ended up just like ripping it into pieces so that I could use it for something else and, and play it down on something. But this is too good. But I love it. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know. We actually can reuse it. I figured it out. Yeah. Yeah. It is now a pretty even color. We do have lots of Heidi Scott mixed media stencils, though, that are reusable. So just make sure if it has paper on there, then you'll know. Seal it if you want to reuse it. Otherwise, think of other purposes for it to use. Um, but then if it is plastic, then there's a lot of other things that do that. So it comes right off. And then this texture piece comes right off of my desk. It's a craft bag. It comes right off of your hands. So, yeah, and it's great. And it's super fun. <laughs> Cool. So that was it as far as demos go. We are rapidly approaching Valentine's Day, so we're gonna kind of end this with some Valentine's Day inspiration with one of our quick videos that we shared on our YouTube channel. So take a look and get inspired for Valentine's Day. Thank you guys.